This is my full review of the Oculus Go standalone VR headset. And in this review, I'm going to let you know why I can wholeheartedly recommend this $199 VR headset to you and in which categories it even puts the $1,400 Vive Pro to shame. All coming up. Hi and welcome here at MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang and if this is your first time here and you're just as excited about VR and AR as I am, then subscribe now and click on the bell button so you don't miss anything. So here it is, my full review of the Oculus Go standalone VR headset. Now with this headset, you do not need a computer and you also don't need a smartphone in order to delve into virtual reality and that for a price of only $199 for the 32 gigabyte version and $249 for the 64 gigabyte version. And if you are in the European Union, you will need to pay 219 euro or 269 euro. Now the big question is, should you get one? And well, let's directly get to it. Yes, you should absolutely get one. This is a fantastic device. And well, I've been using it now for one week and I completely fell in love with it. Just to sum it up before we go into detail, it has great lenses, it has a great display in the virtual world. Everything looks very, very nice. You have very, very little screen door effect and it is simply the perfect device to watch movies, to have some relaxed VR experiences, lying down in bed, and it's simply awesome. But now let's get into the full review. As always with my in-depth headset reviews, let's start with design features and comfort of the Oculus Go. So let's have a look at the design. Now, as you can tell, this design language, of course, reminds us of the Oculus Rift. You can directly see, all right, this is an Oculus device. And well, that's not a bad thing since the Oculus Rift is one of the better looking VR headsets out there. So definitely it did take some design cues from the Oculus Rift. But now, as you can tell, of course, this is in gray and well, they have improved on the design. So why would I say so with the original Oculus Rift, you hardly had any space here for your glasses, but with the Oculus Go that has changed. You have lots of space here for your glasses and I've shown you that in my unboxing of the Oculus Go, but I wanna show it again to you guys here. There is so much space here for glasses and there's even some wiggle room, which is really good. And also this comes with an inlay for glasses wearers where you can space the, the distance between your glasses and the lenses so that you won't scratch your lenses. So that is very, very well done. And all people who wear glasses and wonder, can I wear glasses with the Oculus Go? Yes, you can. So that is definitely already really, really nice. So let's have a look at the face padding. Also, I also showed that to you already in the unboxing, but let me show you again. This material here is some kind of foam neoprene. So this feels really, really good on your skin. It is soft, but it's also not too soft. So it is not as fragile as the other foams that are being used from other companies. So this is not fragile. You can take the whole thing out. Actually, you can take the whole thing out and wash it in your washing machine if it got sweaty, for example. And yeah, well, then you're good to go again. So very, very nice design choices. I think it looks very nice. And well, the most important thing, it is very good to wear for glasses wearers. And overall, it is a very nice design. So now let's go to the features of this device. What do you get here in this package? So again, this is a standalone device. You do not need to connect this to your computer in order to get into VR. You do not need a gaming computer, which is fantastic. Also, you do not need um, a mobile phone that you would put in front of it like, like you had to do with the Gear VR or with the Datum devices. You just need this device to get into VR and that is fantastic. It is so straightforward. You simply put it on and you are in VR and that is one of the big, big advantages of the Oculus Go. Now, Let's have a look around and let's have a look what does this device offer. So, of course, here are fantastic lenses. These are Fresnel lenses. We're going to talk about that in the next 
category. Here is a proximity sensor. So with this sensor, the device will know, um, do you wear it? And then it will turn on. And also it will know once you take it off and then it will save some energy by, yeah, by shutting down. And what else do we have here? Now here on top of the device, we have the on and off button. And here we also have the volume rocker. Then on the bottom of the device here, we have a microphone. So you can live stream whatever you see to Facebook or also this microphone is going to be used in multiplayer games if you want to speak with your friends online. So this is very, very useful. And the most interesting addition as compared to other headsets is actually to be found here. So this is where actually your head strap is connected to. But here you can see this thing here is actually a loudspeaker. So the audio is being transferred from here through this plastic head strap directly to your ears. And that is incredibly useful. So you can just put it on. You don't even have to think about fiddling with your headphones or, or plugging something into your ear. No, you can directly listen to yeah, the, the audio from your VR experiences. And it is simply so useful. It is so easy. Yeah, you just put it on. You don't have to think about anything and you're directly in VR and you don't even have to think about putting on headphones. And the audio is surprisingly clear. Of course, it's not some high fidelity sound, but it's really good enough for most of the things that you do, like watching movies or playing some, some uh, little games in VR. It is definitely good enough. So I'm, I'm really a big fan of this kind of design. But you also have to know this is not like your environment won't hear what you're listening to. Yes, your environment will also hear the sounds coming out of these tiny loudspeakers here. So if you want to enjoy your VR experience in privacy, then you definitely still need to plug in a headset. And yeah, you can do so. You can do so here. Here you can plug in your, your audio headset and this is directly next to the micro USB that you use to, to charge the device or to transfer some media to the device. The Oculus Go comes with one controller. Now, this controller has one trigger button here. It has a touchpad that is clickable and it has two more buttons here that you can use to interact with the virtual worlds. Now, this controller also is very, very comfortable to hold. And in the one week that I'm using it now, it is very, very nice to use. Now, this controller, just like the Gear VR one and the Daydream one, is a three degrees of freedom controller. It means you can point, but you cannot reach like you can on the high-end PC VR and the PSVR, for example. But in the use cases that this is made for, it is more than enough. You can start your movie, you can have some little interactions in games. So that is really good enough. And it's very, well, again, it is very nice in your hand. It's very ergonomic. It is much, much better than the Daydream remote. This is the remote that comes with the Lenovo Mirage Solo, the competitor device. It does not even have a trigger. Yeah, so in direct comparison, the Oculus Go one wins, definitely wins. It's much, much better. And again, it's a very, very nice remote. All right, so now let's talk about the features that this device does not have as compared to the more expensive high-end PC VR headsets. So this headset does not have a manual IPD adjustment. What is IPD? IPD is your interpapillary distance, the distance between your eyes. And the average IPD is around 63 or 64 millimeters. So if your IPD is in that range, you won't have any problems with this device because this device was made for those average human beings. And well, those people won't have any problem. But if you have an IPD that is much bigger than this average, or if you have an IPD that is much smaller than this average of 64 millimeters, then you might run into problems and then it might be not so convenient for you to use this headset because, well, you cannot adjust 
the IPD settings. But still, the lenses, they have such a huge and forgiving sweet spot that it might still work for you, even if it doesn't work with other headsets that, doesn't have, that don't have a manual IPD adjustment. So for example, my wife, she has an IPD of 57 and I let her try the device and she didn't have any problems whatsoever. Also, I heard from others who have an IPD of around 70 and they also used the device without problems. Again, the reason the lens being so nice and having such a huge and forgiving sweet spot that still it work, would work out fine. But if you have such a bigger IPD, then definitely I would advise you to check out the device before you buy it, probably find a friend who has it or go to a store and check it out for yourself to make sure that you can actually use it. So that is very important. This does not have a manual IPD adjustment. Also, what it doesn't have, six degrees of freedom. This is a three degrees of freedom device. Now, what does that mean? Well, six degrees of freedom means in VR, you can do things like dodge or duck away and well the position of the device in space will be accounted for now with these three degrees of freedom headsets that is not the case with those three degrees of freedom headsets you can look left right up down and you can also tilt your head this will be perfectly represented within vr but if you move forwards or backwards that will not work but well in my personal opinion, for this device, this is not really a problem because this is really more for content consumption, for lying in bed, for watching a movie, for having a relaxed seated VR experience. And for that, that is really perfect. Well, and I'm going to get to that later in this review. So that concludes the features of this device. Now let's get to comfort. Comfort, of course, is so important for those VR headsets since you're wearing them on your face for longer periods of time. And I can tell you that the Oculus Go is a very, very comfortable VR headset. Now, the reason why, well, again, I'm a big fan of this foam neoprene material. It feels very good on your, on your face. And that's why you can wear it for longer periods of time without feeling uncomfortable. However, I must also tell you that in general, I'm not a big fan of these ski mask type of headsets because, well, the headset is being pressed onto your face and after a while you will definitely feel that you have this kind of marks after you get rid of it and you look like a little panda bear. And that's no difference here with the Oculus Go. So in general, I prefer those PSVR style headsets where the weight of the device rests on your forehead and you have a rigid strap, which is here on the back of your head. But you know what? In this case, I'm really fine with these straps. Now, the reason why, first of all, this makes it much more portable. I can just do this here and well, the headset doesn't have a huge footprint and I can really bring that anywhere. Also, it's not very heavy. It only weighs 470 grams. So it's very, very portable. So therefore, I think it's the right decision to go for the straps here with the Oculus Go. Then another really, really important point to consider. I'm using this in bed, right? When I'm lying there on my pillow and well, I look up and I have this huge Netflix screen. And if this was a rigid strap, right? Like for example, the PSVR or the Lenovo Mirage Solo, the direct competitor. Well, if you have this rigid strap in the back of your head, it is not so nice to lie down on your pillow, right? And to watch Netflix or so. So that's why I think in this case for the Oculus Go, I'm really happy about this strap design. And overall, this is a super nice and comfortable device. So now let's get to the part that blew me away, the display and the lenses. So why do I say that blew me away? Well, for $199, I was actually not expecting like a fantastic VR experience, especially what the picture in VR is concerned. But when I first put this on, I was simply so surprised how great everything looks like. And that comes from me where I have all the devices. I have the Vive Pro, I have the Samsung Odyssey, I have the Oculus Rift and the Vive. I really have everything, PSVR, I have them all. But this really blew me away in terms of how great everything looks and how little of a screen door 
effect there is. Now, why is that the case? Well, first of all, the device has a resolution of 1280 times 1440 pixel per eye. So that is already a higher resolution than, for example, the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift have. So that part is already good. But even though the resolution is not as high as the Vive Pro and the Samsung Odyssey, which have 1600 times 1440 pixels per eye, this still looks nearly as good, probably even better in terms of screen door effect than the Vive Pro and the Samsung Odyssey. Now, that really, really is super surprising. And the reason is that this does not use a pentile matrix display where every pixel is only rep represented by two subpixels. No, this uses a full RGB stripe pixel display, which means every pixel is displayed by three subpixels. So overall, you have more subpixels than you have with the Vive Pro, and that's why you see even less screen door effect than you see with the Vive Pro, for example. And that is very, very surprising and really incredible. Also for the lenses, Oculus says that these are the best lenses they've ever put into a VR headset. Well, they haven't done so many VR headsets, but I can just say this is true. This puts the lenses of the Vive Pro to shame. It is unbelievable. There is so little got rays, there's so little glare. And well, even though these are Fresnel lenses, right? Fresnel lenses, which normally come with got rays, you barely see any and this is simply incredible. Also in terms of FOV, the field of view, it is just as good as the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive and well, that really surprised me at the price point of $199. But don't just take my word for it. Of course, as I always do with these reviews, I did through the lens comparison shots to show that to you and to prove that to you. Let's have a look. So I took the same through the lens picture of this wall painting on the Oculus Rift, the Oculus Go and the HTC Vive Pro. Now here is the first comparison between the Oculus Rift on the left and the Oculus Go on the right. And directly you can see with the naked eye already on the left, you can see the individual pixels while on the right, this is quite tough to see. Now that is not so surprising because the Oculus Go has a higher resolution with 1280 times 1440 pixel as compared to the Rift with 1080 times 1200 pixels. However, what is surprising how well the Go does with the color reproduction because the Go only has an LCD panel while the Rift has an OLED panel and normally with OLED panels you have these dark blacks which look much better than on LCD panels. But here in a direct comparison, have a look at the hair color of this lady. It's black and the black of the Go looks very, very dark. So if you're wondering, does the LCD panel have very light black levels? No, it looks very nice and the overall color reproduction on the Go is great. So now let's zoom in. And here at this zoom level, you can even see the difference more clearly. On the left, the Rift very pixelated while on the right, the Go, you can hardly see the individual pixels. You can see them now, but it looks much better than on the Rift. So now let's compare the Oculus Go with the HTC Vive Pro that cost a whopping $1,400 for the complete package. So here's the comparison. On the left, the Vive Pro and on the right, the Go. And without a doubt, the Vive Pro looks great. But the surprising part is that the Go looks nearly as good or even better if you look at the screen door effect. With the naked eye, it is tough to see screen door effect on the Go, but on the Vive Pro with the naked eye, you can see the screen door effect. So the Vive Pro has a resolution of 1600 times 1440 pixel per eye, but it uses a pentile matrix. So with only two subpixels per pixel, whereas the Go uses the RGB stripe matrix, which has three subpixels per pixel. So overall you have 20% more subpixels with the Go as compared to the Vive Pro. And that's why you have less screen door effect. Let's also zoom in here. And especially here, when zoom in, it becomes very apparent that the Go has less screen door effect than the Vive Pro. Next, let's compare the lens quality of the three devices. And here, let's especially have a look at the God Rays. 
So the god rays are this kind of glare that you see in high contrast scenes and especially with the Oculus Rift this glare is very very apparent and a well known problem of the Oculus Rift. Now let's have a look at the Vive Pro. And as you can tell here with the Vive Pro we also have an awful amount of god rays in high contrast scenes. Actually that amount of god rays is really unbearable for a device that cost $1400 and HTC actually simply put the old Vive lenses into the Vive Pro without innovating or without updating anything. So now let's compare that with the lenses of the $199 Oculus Go. And as you can tell the difference as compared to the Rift and the Vive Pro is stunning. There are nearly no god rays at all and I can say that these lenses are at the moment the best lenses that you can find in a VR consumer device. Also again have a look at the black levels. This is not some grey, this is really a nice black. And at the end of this lens and display comparison let's have a look at the three pictures next to each other. Now what I cannot show you in this comparison is actually the frequency, the maximum display frequency of the devices. For the Oculus Go that is 72 Hz and that is below the 90 Hz that the PC VR headsets offer. Now does that mean that the picture is flickering? Absolutely no and it's actually a step up from the standard 60 Hz that the mobile phone based Gear VR and Daydream experiences offer. So as you can tell the virtual worlds in the Oculus Go simply look amazing and it's just so surprising that it can compete against the best in class like the Vive Pro for example. Actually it puts the Vive Pro to shame when it comes to lenses and that is pretty unbelievable for a $199 device as compared to this $1400 Vive Pro that they market as the best in class which simply is not true. So now let's talk about the performance of the Oculus Go. How well does it perform especially as compared to the Gear VR? Because for me with the Gear VR I did run into quite a few problems like it would overheat really soon after half an hour things would throttle and well things would get stuttery, the device would get really warm and it was not a joy to use the Gear VR. So how well does the Oculus Go perform? Well I can tell you it performs Great! I didn't have any problems whenever I used the device. It was perfectly fluent. It was just flowing. There was no stuttering whatsoever. The device didn't overheat and I did use it until the battery was gone. So really there's a big big difference between Gear VR performance and the Oculus Go performance. But of course you cannot generalize it because for the Gear VR it also definitely depends on which phone you will use in order to use it. Now let's talk about the battery and in my opinion the battery is one of the weak parts of the Oculus Go. It only lasts for two and a half hours and well at least in my case these two and a half hours are gone much too soon. So for example I'm watching a movie and then after one and a half hours the movie is finished and then I still want to play some VR games or I want to surf the web for example and yeah well these sessions will then only last for probably half an hour to an hour and then well it's over and yeah actually you could simply put in the battery pack right and it does work you can you can prolong your session and you can keep on playing or whatever you do but Oculus says they would discourage you from using the Go while you charge it. Now probably they are afraid of overheating for example or that something would break and then they will have to exchange the system for you. But um, yeah in my actual tests it worked and it also worked without overheating but well Oculus would tell you not to do so so it's up to you if you would like to use the device while you charge it. So, but anyways definitely I would say I'd be much more happy if they had put a more beefy battery into the device but probably two and a half hours might be enough for you. For me it is a bit on the short side. So at the end of this review let's talk about content. What kind of things can you play or watch with the Oculus Go? For who is it made? Now let me tell you again this is simply perfect for content consumption. I personally use it to watch Netflix and probably to have some social interactions in some social apps and I'm going to tell you about these now. This is not for those people who hope now to play Skyrim in VR or for people who want to play Beat Saber. For those more beefy experiences 
definitely go for the Oculus Rift, go for the Vive, or go for the Windows Mixed Reality headset because you won't be able to play them on the Oculus Go. What you can perfectly do, again, watch movies on a huge private screen, watch movies in a huge movie theater, even though you're actually in an airplane, for example. So for these experiences, for watching movies, for watching any kind of movies, this is simply awesome. But, well, you also have games there. Um, this device is binary compatible with all the Gear VR experiences. So the Gear VR developers can easily port over their apps and games to the Oculus Go and most of them have done it already. That's why on the packaging of the Oculus Go you will see, okay, this already has like thousand apps, games and movies. However, it sounds like so huge and awesome, but you still have to cherry pick the best out of those thousand apps, games and movies because not everything is great. But definitely there are really those awesome experiences which are lots of fun. So for all the content consumption, Netflix of course is there, Hulu, Showtime, the most important stuff is there. And also they're going to have like their own offering which is called Oculus TV where also you can simply watch the latest shows and that is great. Now for the gaming side, again, this is not made for playing these super immersive games like Skyrim VR or Beat Saber or all these games that are now hot in VR. The games that are available for the system are not bad as well. There are some horror games, there are all kinds of games actually, right? And they are nice, but they are not like this totally immersive kind of games, but they are games that you can enjoy in a seated position. So if you enjoy a game while simply being relaxed, like for example, again, I use this in battle lot, then yeah, you don't have to move so much like you have to do with the, those deeply immersive games that are available for the high-end uh, PC VR system. So there is a good selection of games, you will enjoy them, but the, the best use case really, content consumption, watching movies on this huge screen, probably doing social VR, meeting your family members, watching a movie together with your family members. For these use cases, this is the perfect VR headset. All right, so now let's come to the conclusion of this Oculus Go review. And as I've told you already in the beginning, should you buy the Oculus Go? And yes, you should absolutely buy the Oculus Go at $199. The value that this VR headset offers is astounding. It is really, really fantastic. It is a great VR headset. Now, if you're a VR enthusiast like me, who already has the high-end PC VR headset, like the Vive or the Vive Pro, you should still get one. I have all the VR headsets. Everything that is on the market, I have it, but I still enjoy this so much because, well, it looks great. And I have it now next to my bed, as I told you, to watch some Netflix before going to bed for some relaxed games. And it's simply so good. And of course, perfect for going on a trip. So this is definitely going to go with me on trips in the future. And if you're not a VR enthusiast, if probably you have never tried VR before, then I believe this is a great first VR headset. This is perfect to test out the VR waters. It is cheap, you don't need a gaming PC, you don't need um, a Samsung Galaxy phone like you need for the Gear VR. You simply need this one. You can see if you like VR, you can have your first exciting VR experiences and I'm sure you're going to love this, especially for the price of $199. You'll get a VR headset with great lenses with a great display with lots of awesome experiences a huge content library you can watch netflix and all these movies on huge personal screens it is simply fantastic and i'm sure that you're going to love it yes so this is these are my final thoughts for the oculus go definitely a huge huge recommendation go and get it now the link is in the description below it will bring you to amazon and if you're in the us you can directly get this from amazon if you're not in the us simply go to oculus.com and order it there it is worth it all right 
that's it for this Oculus Go review. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any more questions about the Oculus Go, simply put those questions into the comment section or much better, why don't you directly chat with me and the MRTV community? And you can do so on the MRTV Discord server. The MRTV Discord server is a great free resource where you can meet me and the great MRTV community and it's completely free of charge. Simply click on the link in the description below and you will go to the MRTV Discord server. All right, that's it for this review. I really hope you enjoyed it and it was helpful for you. If yes, give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you have not yet subscribed to MRTV, why don't you do it now? I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode.